this is part two of the 50 tags challenge. These are the five we've made in the first episode. If you want to see what, all, what this challenge is all about, please refer to that video, which I have linked below. And today I want to create a few more. Now that I've kind of gotten a hang of this, I maybe want to go out of my comfort zone a little bit more, maybe try some mixed media and see what fun tags we can come up with. Welcome, this is Barbara. Let me go out of my comfort zone a bit more. Let me just choose one that I wouldn't mind covering up. Yeah, I think this is a good one. This would be a very large tag or we cut it in two and make two tags, which I think is better. This one I want, or these two, I want to start off a bit differently. Let's try putting on some gesso. I have this gesso from Golden that I really love. And I'm going to put it on with my spatula because I don't want an even coating. I want it to have some texture. It's kind of like icing a cake. <laughs> Not that I ever do that. <laughs> Maybe we'll leave a bit showing through. I'm not looking for this to be smooth. Yep, I think this will do. And we'll do the same thing here. Yep, I think that's good. I will take these to my heat gun and dry them off. They are dry now. And this one actually had a little bit of bubbling because I went really close with my heat gun. So that actually adds some nice texture there. And I thought next I could add some buff titanium acrylic paint. If I can open this. There. And again, I will just use my spatula. almost empty just a little more please <laughs> I don't know if I can get any more to come out here come on just a little bit <gasps> there that was too much probably <laughs> This is such a very different effect than if I would brush it on. I love the structure that the spatula gives it. So this is the second one. Again, I have to let these dry. And I'm back. So this is what we have now. They look nice and grungy. Now what? <laughs> From the part I tore off before from the chocolate factory and it's nice and see-through so maybe we can add that okay, this one obviously don't want to cover up the whole thing let me tear around this I like that, but it should probably have something else underneath. Some numbers maybe. Hmm. Not sure.
Hmm, I'm not sure about this one on the top. Let me glue down what I have so far. Okay, this is that so far. I don't know, do I add this or not? Yeah, I'll just add it. <laughs> and then maybe we add, an, oops, <laughs> we add, oh no, now I got this on my thing, hang on. <laughs> don't you just love baby wipes? <laughs> Good to go. Yeah, so why don't we add some of this buff titanium to kind of blend it all in a little more. Just to kind of make it go over the edges a little bit. I'm not sure if that's a good idea. I have quickly dried that off as well. Now let's see what this is gonna look like once we edge it with our vintage photo. And I feel like I wanna give it a little stronger edge so I'm gonna use my Espresso Truffle ink and make more of a harsh border by going over it directly with the ink pad. So this has, of course, a very different effect now. I'm gonna make it a little more grungy this way. Maybe even go in a little bit by holding it a bit more flat. This really makes it grungy and looking old. And there we go. I'd say that's another one done. So for the second one of these, I'm thinking maybe I'll just stick down a few things and then we go over it with a thin layer of gesso. Why not? <laughs> Let's see what happens. I'm just having a really good time just playing around and trying new things because that's what this is all about. If we just keep doing what we're so comfortable with, then how do we grow as an artist, right? So we have to be willing to fail sometimes. Okay, what else can I stick on here? Here's a stamp that is torn a little bit so maybe this is a good background stamp what else? Then there's this one. Oh, that's the same one <laughs> okay maybe we choose a different one there's this one in blue we can take one of these Don't want to cover up the whole thing because that would make no sense. <laughs> like that. What else? What else do we have? I could do a partial one. That's always fun. Not throwing this away. <laughs> Yes, what else? Or actually, why don't we put this one here? Need something here. Oh, we have this one, the one that we cut apart. Yep, let's stick him down there. Not gonna waste anything here. <laughs> okay, then we could do some more numbers. Take my memento ink.
three numbers. That's all we do. Then we could add this. Or do we? Hmm. Or maybe we just add that one number from this one. So let's put some gesso over this. This time I really only want a light coating, so I think I'll just use my finger. I could also maybe dilute it. That's plenty. I have quickly dried this off. So this is now what it looks like. I have no idea where I'm going with this. <laughs> but maybe to make the white a little less white, let's go over it with some tea dye and a blending brush to see what happens then. Not much, it looks like. <laughs> But this is giving me an idea. Maybe I want to use some, what are they called? Some pastels, some water soluble wax pastels to really do some mixed media. I don't know. Do we want that? Oh, that does make a difference. I don't know if it comes through on the camera, but it is less white now for sure. What I'm worried about is I have no idea what to use as a focal point. <laughs> I went through those cards again and I found two things that I don't know could work. So I could cut out this guy. Is it a guy or a girl? I'm actually not sure. I mean the the bonnet thing kind of makes me think it's a woman, but I, I honestly don't know because the face doesn't really look very feminine. Does it say? Oh Margaret. So it's a girl, I mean a woman. Okay, oh wow, poor woman. Anyway, so maybe I'll cut her out and then see if she might work, might be a bit weird. <laughs> or we have this here of Cologne. Uh, actually, it's, mm, yeah, I think this is, this is the dome in Cologne in Germany. I kind of like the coloring of that, but I might, but I'm thinking maybe it's not bold enough to be a focal point. So I will first try this one. So I will cut out her head, maybe even the, some of the shoulders. <laughs> Let's see, this might be a disaster. So this is Margaret. I know her name's not Margaret. It's Margaret. Well, they call it Margareta. So Margareta, <laughs> this is what she looks like cut out. I kind of like her like this. And if we put her on this background, it is a bit weird, but then again, it's a bit cool too. <laughs> so I think I'm just gonna glue her on, or do I need to ink her first? Let me maybe ink her up a little bit to give her a little bit of a warmer tone. Let's warm her up a little bit. <laughs> give her some color in her face. Yeah, much better. <laughs> All right, let's glue her on. Like that. Okay, I like it. It is so weird that I like it. <laughs> so now I'm thinking that maybe to make her blend in just a little bit more, we can go around her with some water soluble pencils. So maybe I start first with a gray. Just gonna trace around her basically. And then I'm going to take my my thin water brush and I have some water here. 
I know I wouldn't need it, it has water inside, but I kind of just like dipping it in water. <laughs> and then what happens? Let's see if we can kind of just blend this out. They're not very strong, these colors. That didn't work very well, because I think now if I go over it, it's not gonna work well. Oh, it is actually. Okay, so let's try this one. It's kind of like an ochre. It's a beautiful color. Let's see what happens. It's been a long time since I've just experimented like this and it's really fun. You never know what's gonna come out especially if you have no plan like me <laughs> you just go go ahead and you just play and see what happens and I really really encourage you to just play don't always have a plan don't feel like you have to have a plan because this is sometimes when the best things happen I'm not saying this is the best thing, I'm just saying in general. <laughs> I don't know if I want to do anything. Yeah, I think I, I, I definitely need some edging. Let me just dry this quickly. So this is what it looks like now that she's dry. And I'm just wondering if I should maybe add some more stamps. Maybe I can squeeze some in here I don't know if this is a good idea but I want to try it that's pretty cool huh yeah let's put those there can we squeeze another one in there let me look for one that oh, we have this one we could do a partial one here can help it a bit with this spatula. Okay. And maybe even another partial one up there. That one corner is a bit empty. No. Okay, I think that's it. Now, do we want to leave this square? Or do we want to round the corners? I feel like I want to round the corners. I'm not sure if my punch can handle it. Let's see. Because it's, it's quite thick. Oh, yeah. Very nice. Let's ink it up. That will again change the look of it. And I think this one would also benefit from a more dark edge as well to make it more grungy. Yeah, I think she's done. I hope she's happy with her new home here. <laughs> so we have seven. And I think these two mixed media ones are my favorite ones so far. So that's two, three, Four, I like this one too. Five, six, and seven. We also have this plain piece of cardboard here. So I'm going to again cut this in two. And one of these, I want to use these as a background. Maybe I'll use the big numbers. Oh, that fits perfectly. <laughs> wow. Perfect, so I will just glue this on. Actually, I'm gonna use glue stick this time. And I'll put it on this because this is less fragile. Now, of course, we need to mute this down again. So once again, I will use my 
just so for this. And I'm going to use my hand again. I like that. While this dries completely, we can think about what to put on this one. And I'm thinking we could maybe add some of these stamps. I think the fun thing about a challenge like this is that you would do things that you usually wouldn't do with your own things or even think about because you have more options. And so usually you probably go for the obvious option. But with this challenge, you cannot. You just have to work with what you have here. And that's kind of what makes it really exciting and makes you think out of the box. I love that. And maybe we should just tear the cardboard itself so that the whole thing has a ragged edge. Because we don't always have to have straight edges. On this one, I wanna try something which might be a bit weird. <laughs> so I have my water brush here, so I wanna try to get out some water drops. Like that. Maybe spread it a little bit. And then I'm going to take my ink. This is a calligraphy ink, burnt sienna. And see what happens if we then drip this into our water puddles. Help it spread a little bit. I, I probably will end up putting gesso over this. Maybe we add some more water. Let's do one more here. Spread it a little more, see what that does. Yes. So it's better if you have more water. Maybe we add some more so that it can really spread. I'm just gonna let this dry and see what that looks like. What do we do here? I could fussy cut her and then see if we can make something fun with this card with her because she's like that. What do you think? So maybe further down. Yeah, maybe like this. Oh, I shouldn't do the same mistake as last time. I should first think more about my background. <laughs> before I glue her down. Let's think about this. What I can do is I can cut her so that I know where she's gonna be. We could add some more of these red numbers because this is kind of like a playful tag and I want the single ones. How about a five? Cut that. And I could just take the one and then cut that there. As you see, I always like working in threes. So you have my, my triangle, I'm happy. <laughs> 
And since I have to add a little bit of everything that was in the box, I could try to use some of these bits here. And in order to stay in my color range, maybe I can find three of those red dots. Two. They're kind of stuck together. Three. That way we can break up that big white space up there without distracting too much from the main image. For this one, maybe we try to find a nice topper here. So I will first punch a hole and we'll add two of these reinforcements front and back. And this time I actually won't even ink it up, I think. Probably should be covered in the back with some coffee dyed paper or something, but for this challenge, I'm not worrying about it. <laughs> Maybe at a later point. Before we put any topper on, we need to think again about the shape of the tag. Do we just leave it square? Or why don't we actually make this into a real tag by cutting the corners? So I cut one. Flip it around so that I have the same shape on the other side. Yeah, I think this one I will go over with my espresso truffle on the edges rather than inking it up with my vintage photo. I just want this to have a, a different look. I think a red ribbon would be fun to bring the red out even more. Either this one, this is perfect, it's exactly the same red, or we do a fun polka dotted one, which would go well with the polka dots we have here. Choices, choices. No, I think I'll take the regular one. Oh, I have an idea. Let's put this through like here. Just like that. And then we could take this fun one here, the checkered one, and we make a bow around it. Like that. That's a fun one, definitely different. <laughs> That's number eight. In the meantime, this one has dried and it's a complete disaster. <laughs> I have no clue what I could make out of this. <laughs> My first thought is, what can I put over this that will match with this? Maybe even without putting gesso on it. So let's check our little wooden pieces here again. Bird. coffee pot what if we add some red tickets underneath here is a French stamp I've glued everything down not sure how I feel about this one. <laughs> I'm going to punch out one of these holes again. I will link this for you again. I linked it in the last video. This is from AliExpress. And I will ink around this one. I feel like the edge, since it's so ragged, it needs to be defined a bit more. Maybe on this one to soften it up a little bit, we could add a, p a little bit of lace. Would that be cute? So either an off-white one, I think that's cute, that works well with the frame. Or I also have a brown one. Nah. 
don't like that at all. But this is sweet. I really think it softens it up. Maybe even a flower or something. I don't know if I have anything this small. I don't have a flower, but I have buttons. So maybe I can find a little white button to put here. Maybe even smaller. No, I actually like this one, even though it's a bit big. Let's do that. Maybe we can add some more lace underneath. Yes, I like that. And I do wanna have some twine going through that button. I will add a dot of glue on the knot so that it won't open. And now it definitely needs something up here as well. Let's try this smaller lace here. And then we tie this off again. This time I'm not going to make a bow because I plan on doing one more thing that will have a bow and I don't want two. So I'm gonna cut these short after making a double knot. And then I just had the idea, I have this mini tag punch that I got at a craft fair. And I have this piece of the ticket left over. I just need to insert that with something. I could put a tiny dot of glue here. This is a good trick if you have small pieces and you can't reach into the into the punch, then you can do something like this. So now I can easily maneuver it. And then we take this off. And now we have a cute tiny tiny tag. So now I need a small small hole. So now we have a small hole here and we can thread some twine through it and tie that around. So now we have our little bow and a little tiny tag on the tag. I really think I thought that I wouldn't like this tag, but now I actually do. It's it's very colorful, which is usually not my thing, but it's cute with all the lace and the button and everything. I think I think now it's really cute. For this next one, I'm going to start off the other way around. I'm actually going to start off with the focal point. So I want to use her. And in the meantime, I have also coffee dyed the doilies that were in the box. And I've also added some of my Distress Stain Wild Honey before it was dry. And these darker spots are actually some alcohol ink in butterscotch, just because I wanted to experiment. So that's what happened there. <laughs> so I think I want to tear around her. I don't want this black edge that she has because that is usually I think in a lot of countries this is what you put out when someone has died and in fact you see here this is like a notice of her death unfortunately November 1905 
Oh, Princess of Belgium. Astrid Sophie Louise Tyra. She's beautiful, isn't she? So let's try to make her a beautiful tag to honor her. Let's make her come back to life by getting rid of this death border. That's better. She's more alive already, I think. And I do want to use a doily, but maybe not the yellow ones. Maybe like this. Maybe just a part of it. And then one thing that I recently purchased are some white fluffy feathers. And I think this is the perfect opportunity to use one. So I got these locally as well. I'm sure you can find feathers on Amazon or, or in your local craft shop. Oh, look at this. This is already beautiful. Just like that. I love it. Now we just need to find a background to put her on. We could use this French text page so that way the language will be the right language. <laughs> and of course we still need a base. We could use this postcard of the Seine River in Paris. It's not Belgium, sorry. But at least they speak the same language. So I'm not sure if it, it's probably a bit big. I'll just cut down this card a little bit. And now I will glue the book page onto this and I will use my glue stick. Okay, just trying to move it so the text is centered. And I did want to have this on top, les passions, so the passions. I want this one to have large round corners. Trim this feather down a little bit, doesn't need to be that big. <laughs> I have these things everywhere. <laughs> I love the softness that the feather gives, like that. And then, of course, this is going to need some lace, obviously. So things are glued down. This is what it looks like. And you can probably hardly see, but she is actually wearing a string of pearls around her neck. And so I have this beautiful pearl trim. And I'm thinking what if we add some here to the bottom of the tag. This is something I usually don't do, but it just works so beautifully together. The only challenge is to snip these off and not have these pearls fall off because that has happened in the past. So I don't know if I will be able to do that. Okay, so this one has fallen off the other piece. Seems to be okay on this one. Let's see if we can do that again for the other side. So I've lost another one. And this one is pulling through. So maybe, oh no. Yep, see, this one is coming off. 
I will try to glue this and um, be back. I just put some of the three-in-one glue on the end here and I think it should be all right. So let's glue this down before anything else happens. And once that has dried, I will cut these ends off that are sticking out at the moment. So I do want the pearls sticking out at the bottom like that. <laughs> Isn't that fun? So how do we make a topper? Two options I came up with. So I have this very delicate lace where I could just cut a strip and then we could put some like a little piece on top here, like that. That would work beautifully. Or we try something a little different, and I have this beautiful one. This one I remember came from Maureen. Thank you, my friend. And I would probably, or I'm not sure, maybe I would cut it down a little bit. I kind of like that. That goes well with, with her hair. That kind of brings that out a little more. Yep, this is a little bit different. I hope you agree with me. I hope you weren't rooting for the other one. So I'll cut this off. Kind of like it the whole width. Yep, and that's what we'll do. Putting it on the two ends, not in the middle. I don't want it flat. Center that, like that. And then on the other side, which we should have inked up first. Okay, I think we can now trim these. But now I'm scared to cut off that thread, actually. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't touch it. Just a little bit. There, I'll just leave it as it is. So this is tag number 10, all done. <laughs> Quick recap of what we've done today. We have Margaret. We have this chocolate factory. We have this fun little kid one, we have the coffee one, and we have beautiful Astrid. Was her name Astrid? I think her name was Astrid. So that's it for today. Definitely a little more daring than what I did yesterday, or actually for you it wasn't yesterday, for you it was a few days ago. <laughs> So 10 done, only 40 more to go. <laughs> if we continue at this pace, I'm only going to need eight more videos to complete the challenge. <laughs> but for now, thank you for watching and hanging out with me. And as you know, love you guys. Mwah, mwah.